Ka is a value that you'll be given and it is a measure of how much a weak acid dissociates. What you can see here is an equation for hypochlorous acid dissociating. Uh, you've got the hydrogen or proton rather here which will donate and get accepted by the water and that will produce the conjugate base and the hydronium ions. And we will then, because it's an equilibrium, be able to write a Ka expression, which is always the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Now, the more an acid dissociates, which means donates its protons, then you'll get a higher concentration of the OCl- ions and the hydroniums. If you've got larger values on the top of this expression, you will get a larger Ka value. So the more an acid dissociates, the larger the Ka. The bigger the Ka, which means it dissociates more, and the more it dissociates, then it's a stronger acid. Let's compare two. So here we've got a hydrogen cyanide, and the Ka value is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. Whereas ethanoic acid here has a Ka value which is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. This Ka value is the larger value. So that means that this weak acid, ethanoic acid, dissociates more and produces more of these ions than what the hydrogen cyanide does. So because the ethanoic acid has the bigger Ka, which means it dissociates more, we can say that the ethanoic acid is a stronger acid compared to HCM. We do convert our Ka values to pKa values because it produces numbers which are integers, so usually between the values of 1 and 14, which makes them a little bit easier to use, but often you'll need to convert them back to Ka if you're doing a calculation. So what you'll see here, to get the pKa value, you need to take the negative log of the Ka, and then that will give you your pKa number. Here's another one. So I've taken the Ka value for ethanoic acid, taken the negative log of that value, and I've got my pKa. What I want to show you here is that if you have a large Ka no, sorry, I've got that wrong. This here is the smaller Ka. It produces a larger pKa number. And vice versa. The larger the Ka value, then the smaller the pKa value. It's what we call an inverse relationship. So smaller Ka's convert to bigger pKa's. Okay, so you can notice that that is a bigger value because you've got a smaller Ka, while bigger Ka's produce smaller pKa's. You will need to know this relationship because you could get a question that asks you about acid strength and they give you the pKa values. So this sums it up. Small Ka means less dissociation, which means bigger the pKa, less dissociation. Whereas, on the other hand, you could take the reverse argument and say big Ka values mean more dissociation, hence small pKa's mean more dissociation. Here's an exam question. Hypochlorous acid was um, given to you with a pKa of 7.53. Another weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, HF, has a pKa of 3.17. You're told that you've got a 1 molar per litre solution of each acid prepared by dissolving them in water, and they want us to compare the two pHs of those solutions. Now remember, the solution that is more acidic, produces more hydroniums, will have a lower pH. So this is the statements that you could write for this answer. Hydrofluoric acid is the stronger acid. Notice it's got the smaller pKa. 
it dissociates more because it has a smaller pKa. So HF will therefore have higher hydronium concentration. As the hydronium increases, the pH decreases. So HF will have a lower pH than HOCl. Thanks for listening.